by far the biggest issue before our country right now is the government's attempt to change our constitution to include an Indigenous voice. It's certainly not the only thing that matters by a long shot, but it's where the Prime Minister has chosen to put his focus. Indeed, the very first thing he said on winning the election was that his government would implement the Uluru Statement from the Heart in full. And that's not just the voice, it's voice, treaty, truth. The activist mantra from the beginning, that's the full Uluru Statement. But now that the voice is floundering in the polls, confirmed again today in the latest Resolve poll, well, Anthony Albanese wants to say it's all now got nothing to do with treaty, even though the activists behind the voice say that treaty and truth are its whole point. In fact, to specifically quote the Uluru Statement, on page 7 it says, Makarata is another word for treaty or agreement making. It is the culmination of our agenda. Now, that word culmination, well, that means the highest or climactic point to something, especially as attained after a long time. But that's the thing with this Prime Minister. He's never across the detail. Certainly, he's not across the detail of the extra pages that comprise the full Uluru Statement, first referenced in the Referendum Council's final report of 2017, and then later released under Freedom of Information a few months ago, along with all the other pages and pages of the smaller regional meetings, the other deliberations that led up to the National Conference at Uluru. 26 pages in all for the Uluru Statement from the Heart in full, and then 86 other pages for the regional meetings. Listen to this exchange with Neil Mitchell as part of a long discussion on The Voice released on a podcast this morning, 3AW, Melbourne Radio, by Neil Mitchell. Mitchell gets into the detail of what the Uluru Statement has to say and what it might mean for this country if we implement it in full, as the Prime Minister has said we will do. Have a listen. They know the Uluru Statement from the Heart is one page, is one page, not hundreds of pages. Uh, but, but what are the other 25 pages? I've well, read them. What are they? What they are is a record of meetings, some of them. They're records of the big lead-up that happened. Do you agree with most of what is said in those 25 pages? I haven't read it. You haven't read it? There's 120 pages. Why would I? I know what, well, I know I what the conclusion you... is. I haven't read it, he says. I haven't read it. Why would I, he says. Well, how about the fact that as Prime Minister of this country, you've said dozens and dozens of times you're going to implement it in full. Because surely to sign us up to something that you admit you haven't even bothered to read is madness. How do you even know what it is in full if you've just read the cover and not the contents? I mean, this is the constitutional equivalent to, of giving a whole lot of Indigenous activists a blank cheque. And he admits it. I mean, I, I listened today and I thought, and he admits it. Hasn't read it, he says, why would I? Now, this is a politician who says he's supported the Uluru push from day one, yet he admits that he's failed to even flick through the very material that the Uluru authors say everyone must read. Now, here's one of those authors, Professor Megan Davis, making this very point at the Sydney Peace Prize last year. It's very important for Australians to read the statement. Um, and the statement is also much bigger. It's actually 18 pages. So not only is the PM deficient in the detail, but he's also failed to do what his own backers say everyone should do. Yesterday on ABC Radio, the Prime Minister had another go at B for allegedly spreading misinformation about The Voice, particularly my statement that the Uluru Statement from the Heart is more than just one page. Peter Credlin's a smart person. Uh, she must know that that's not true. She's saying things that she knows is not true, as is Peter Dutton, allowing questions to be asked in Parliament about that. No, no serious person uh, thinks that that's the case. 
Well, first of all, I have read it. I have read it. I read every single page. Was the PM admits today he's only read the cover. But, but more than that, Professor Megan Davis, one of the principal authors, she has said at least, at least six times that the Uluru Statement is more than one page. So too has Pat Anderson, who co-chaired the Referendum Council, and it was the Council's final report that included 16 pages of what it called extracts from the Uluru Statement. And look, yes, the Prime Minister is right. Some of this detail has been out for some time. He says you didn't need an FOI, Credlin, it's public. Well, no, except for this, except for the line out of the FOI doc document that's not available publicly anywhere else. This line that talks about a treaty and financial settlement, including the reference to reparations based on a proportion of Australia's GDP. A very powerful part of the Uluru Statement from the Heart is that it isn't just the first, like, one-page statement. It's actually a very lengthy document of about 18 to 20 pages. And it's actually, like, 18 pages, the Uluru Statement. People only read the first. And also in the Uluru Statement from the Heart, uh, from the report, rather, the Referendum Council's report, the Uluru Statement is is in fact 18 pages long. So PM, is Megan Davies and Pat Anderson also spreading misinformation? Are they part of some sort of conspiracy? And sure last week, both of them recanted, insisting that the Uluru Statement was indeed just one page to help you out of a hole of your own making. But that was after years and years of declaring that it was so much more than just one page and that Australians should read all of it, every page, not just the 439 words on the poster. Now, I know I'm getting under the PM skin here, but if my regular viewers know anything about me, you will know that a bit of political bullying only makes me more determined than ever to show Australians what he doesn't want you to know about or understand. And as for others who want to keep giving me a whack, well, I could say more, but I won't. You only diminish yourself with the spin. Have a look at the size of this crowd last night in Toowoomba. Over 1,500 people were there because they care about our country. They, like most of us, want better outcomes for Aboriginal people, but they're unconvinced that you do this by dividing our nation by race. Now, for the record, I'm not against the voice because it means treaty and truth. Reparations and the retelling of our history is a story of shame, as bad as all of that is. I'm against the voice because I reject this move to divide us by our ancestry. Why should you say over the government of our country be determined by how long you or some of your ancestors have been here. Why should we abandon Bob Hawke's immortal statement that in Australia we have no hierarchy of descent? We have no privilege of origin. Or is the current Prime Minister now going to try and claim Bob Hawke is somehow part of this conspiracy too?